Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. That's Ready Homeschool. My name is Mrs. D. Today we have our first grade curriculum picks for the 2025 to 2026 school year. Can you believe we're here? I'm like, it's just speechless. <laughs> I am speechless that we are here. Um, let's just go ahead, hop right into it. I'm going to put on the screen as I show you each piece of curriculum, how much it would cost if you were to go out and buy it today. At the very end here, I will do a cost analysis of how much it would cost. Please note though that um, I will be doing a budgeting video because what the cost is is not necessarily what we paid and I'll explain that in my budgeting video. And then the last bit we'll be talking a little bit about schedule. Let's just get into it. We've got a lot and we're starting with math. So for this child, we are going to be continuing three programs which are already using in his kindergarten year and it's already we're already loving it. It's working. So we're going to continue with it. So we will be going with math with confidence first grade. Very, very much so excited about that one. We're going to be going with Matthew C alpha, which is focusing on single digit addition and subtraction. And this is going to be really starting that mastery um, style of math. And the other one here, math with confidence is a spiral approach. And then the last thing that we are going to be doing is mathematical reasoning level B. Now we will actually start this definitely before the new year because we or the new school year because we do one page a day and he's almost done with level A. So we will be starting that one early. Okay, let's talk about language arts. This year we are adding so many more components than we did in our kindergarten year. We're gonna be doing spelling for the first time and grammar and composition and like there's just so much. <laughs> So there are a couple things that are going to be a continuation from last year. And the first one is going to be phonics. So we are going to be continuing um, with all about reading. We will be moving into level two here. Um, we most likely, we are still, we're in the second half of level one here. So during summer, I envision us still working on level one. So we might not start level two exactly at um, the beginning of the year, but we'll see. But there we go, we have that one. We also are continuing to work on a program that we have absolutely loved and that is Explode the Code. So we will be in the middle of book two at the beginning of the school year. So we will most likely also get through part of book three of Explode the Code. For handwriting, we are finally getting to a program that I picked for kindergarten, but we weren't quite ready for. And that's going to be Getty DeBay. Um, this program offers italics, italic, basic italic manuscript writing, which will eventually lead into cursive. So we will probably be um, in the middle of book A um, at the beginning of the year, which means we most likely will also get to book B. And I have both here on hand just in case. And I'm really excited about that one. Now, new subject for us in this upcoming year is spelling. <laughs> My child is actually doing pretty well with spelling already, not using a curriculum. We um, phonetically sound things out all the time with our current program from the All About Learning Press. And I think it's working well. I was going kind of back and forth with spelling because part of me didn't want to invest in like a big time commitment for spelling, but I did ultimately choose All About Spelling, which is has does, does have a lot of components, just like All About Reading. So we'll have to see how that one goes. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not, not really sure about that one, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, okay, so that's spelling. Now for grammar and reading comprehension here, as well as composition, because we're starting to write, our main program that we are going to be using is going to be Lightning Literature and Composition Grade 1. I'm really, really excited about this program, you guys. Um, I'm really excited. It is looks pretty simple, but thorough. And I do think that this will be a really good secular program for us to use here for these components. Now, I would be totally amiss if I did not pull in another resource that we already love and hold dear to our heart. And that is exploring the world through story. We're going to be stepping into level B, which is fo focusing on trickster tales. Now I don't have it printed yet um, or purchased yet, to be honest, but I did buy, 
<laughs> the components that we are going to need. So we'll be reading through some trickster tales from around the world and African-American folk tales for young readers. So that will be um, part of that program that we are going to be doing. Now for read alouds, we do read alouds as a family. And I really love having read aloud time that's not tied to any sort of like, I don't know, like book reports or big in-depth like analysis. I love just having that time to read as a family. So we do, what I decided I wanted to do is I wanted to select books considering both of my children, uh, keeping them in mind. So we have, I picked like five books considering my pre-kindergartner um, and I talked about his in the pre-kindergarten curriculum pick video. And I picked a couple of books considering now my first grader. So we will be exploring these as a family, but these aren't going to be the only books we are going to explore. I purposefully left room for us to go down rabbit holes and pick what sounds good in the moment. Um, but here we go. We have a couple of things we will be exploring, including Charlotte's Web, The Akimbo Adventures, Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, um, I've read this book before. It's really good. And my child is like obsessed with dragons. So this is a perfect pick for him. We are going with Little House in the Big Woods. And you guys, this year we are going to explore the Odyssey. So we will be doing um, Tales from the Odyssey and parts one and part two. <laughs> name something different but parts one and part two this is from Mary Pope Osborne she's the same author who does the Magic Tree House books which we have loved um, but we will be exploring the Odyssey this year the other thing that we are going to be doing with my first grader is we, I've decided that we are going to start focusing on bringing in religious texts we are a secular family here but that does not mean that, that religious texts are not going to be a part of our curriculum so we are actually going to start exposing him to stories from the Bible. And um, we are also, I haven't found um, yet the resource, but the second half of the year, we want to focus specifically on stories that are pertinent to uh, Judaism. So we're going to start, start focusing on Christianity and Judaism this year through story um, exposure. Right now, this is the resource that I am learn leaning towards for Judaism. And this is the... Bible that I'm leaning towards for Christianity, Christianity and being able to do the comparison between the two will be a part of this year. Okay, so for history this year, we are going to be using Core Knowledge's um, history for grade one. And I'm going to put here on the screen all the topics that we are going to be touching base on. And you'll notice a lot of these have to do with ancient civilizations, which is pretty exciting because I have a resource that I bought last year that we did not get to from the history perspective. And that's going to be Bookshark. Um, I have a really big binder over here, <laughs> but we have our Bookshark binder. Um, and that's gonna be going into, it's like an intro to world cultures um, or intro to the world. And it does talk about a lot of ancient history. So actually they're gonna tie together pretty well. And part of that is we are going to be starting our timeline book as part of our history this year. So whenever we talk about, um, uh, someone in history, a particular moment, um, events, etc. We are going to start populating our timeline book, which we hope to use throughout our entire homeschool journey. Now, my kid is very hands-on and he's really started to get into crafts and um, coloring and things like that. So I did also pick up Evan Moore's uh, History Pockets for Ancient Civilizations. It's meant for grades one through three. And these are going to be a hands-on way for us to expand upon what we are covering in Core Knowledge and then also Bookshark. I didn't think I really needed this, but I couldn't resist. Let's be real. I think it, it just resonates, I think, with my kid. So I'm excited about it. Probably a little unnecessary, but anyway, let's get into science now. All right, so for science this year, you guys, we are pulling in a piece of curriculum that I picked actually last year and I did such a bad job with implementing it that this year we are trying it again and that is building foundations of scientific understanding. Um, yeah, wow, I did not prepare for this very well last year. This year I am preparing differently. If you're interested in a video about preparing for this because it can be a little bit daunting, uh, comment down below so I know this is something you might want to see. The other thing we're going to be pulling in for history, not history, science, science, 
is something we have had really good success with this past year, and that is Project Learning Tree Environmental Education Activity Guide. We love this book, you guys. We do an activity from here like once every two weeks, and we will continue doing that. Sometimes we do it on weekends. Sometimes we just throw it like whenever we need a little something extra. Um, but these are all activities you do outside. You're learning about the environment, what you can do for the earth, what the earth does for us. And it really just makes you feel so grateful, so grateful for where we live and the world and everything that it gives us. And it makes us feel like we can do something to better our environment and give back. You know, it just, it just makes us feel so cozy in that regard. So I do want us to continue with that. It's a really good program. Now, human body. My child has recently asked to learn about the human body. And so we are going to do that. We are going to learn about the human body. <laughs> um, I'm obviously pairing this under science, but this is kind of one of his, I would say, his personal selections. So we will be using from Core Knowledge um, their free human body resource. But because this is like one of his personal selections, I really wanted it to be fun. So I did buy this learning lab, um, Human Body. This has a lot of very cool activities and things that you can do. There's some icky things in here, which tells me my child is going to love it. Um, but for his personal interest, we are going to be approaching the human body beyond what is just in BFSU, which means in BFSU, there is like two sections where we're gonna talk about the human body that will be very condensed, or I might skip it entirely because we're gonna be focusing on it so much for his own personal. Now, another personal, which also kind of falls in that science category is coding. We currently do coding through code.org and he loves it. He told me he wants to continue. So we will be doing um, code.org as well. So computer science, I thought that would probably live here the best. All right, let's move on to our next subject, which is French. We are going to be continuing with Les Lustiques, the, the book one, for the A1.1 um, Delft Prime exam. So we are currently on unit two. We are very much so very slowly moving through this program and we are going to continue this program. It's a very good one and we have liked it. But we have decided we wanna add a little bit extra. <laughs> so I did actually invest in the Homeschool Languages French One program. It has not arrived yet. Comment down below if you want to see an unboxing on it when it does arrive. It does look really fun. It has some really fun and engaging components, um, but I'm excited to give it a whirl. I've heard really good things about it. I've seen the Spanish one, but this will be the first time to, if I get, actually get to see it in French is when I get my hands on it. So let me know if you're interested. All right, so art is going to be next. And for art this year, I wanted to continue a program we've already started, which is Artistic Pursuits. So volume two here, I'm really excited about is covering um, art of the ancients, which really ties in well with our history. So I thought that this was great, um, but we will be continuing our art through here. We love volume one, which we're going through now. And whenever we finish volume one, we'll move into volume two. And I think what we will do is circle back to volume one, because there's a lot of benefit that you can get from redoing these art projects kind of multiple times. Now for music, my child is doing piano and we're gonna continue piano lessons. He's doing wonderfully. He's at a point now where he's starting to play with two hands, where his hands are doing different things, which is way better than what I can do with piano. And so my mind is just blown. I think he's doing great. So we will continue our one-on-one -on -one piano instructions. And then we are also gonna continue with Prodigy's music lessons. We do that primarily online. It's a program we invested a pretty penny in. It's working, we love it, and it's something he can do with his younger brother. So we will be continuing that as well. Okay, hoo-wee, last thing. I, let's talk about testing. <laughs> so I am the kind of person who I don't really care about tests. Um, they never really bothered me. I get nervous before tests, but tests are kind of just a fact of life. You know, I always had them in school. I had them when I was working. Um, my kids test me on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know what? I really wanted to make testing be something that was no big deal. I wanted it to just be another thing. So I ended up getting from Spectrum. I got their test practice book one. I don't know how we're going to do this yet. Um, I just know that I wanted us to kind of get used to the concept of tests. 
Now this past year we did map growth testing and we will do um, map growth testing just once at the end of his first grade year. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing that, but I don't know. I thought it would be nice to have this resource because testing really is not that big of a deal and it's okay. We're all, we're all going to be tested. We test ourselves, people test us. That's just kind of how it is. So I wanted to keep it pretty low key and bring in some test practice. All right, let's take a look at my computer. We're gonna go over cost. So the full cost breakdown, if I were to go out today and buy all of these components that we are using, um, we have math here at 256.74, our reading comprehension, grammar and composition at 153.45. I mean, you guys can see the numbers all the way through. So pretty darned hefty. And this all adds up and equates to a grand total of $1,993.98. Now this is not what we paid this year, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can actually see our budget. All right, and we are back here. Let's talk a little bit about schedule. Basically for my first grade year here, we are gonna be doing five days a week and I'm going to go ahead and share with you what my schedule is here on the screen. Alrighty, so this is going to be my first kind of stab at our schedule and what I'm kind of envisioning for this upcoming year. So for our core subjects, which we will do five days a week, that will include math, French, phonics, and handwriting. And that's basically what we are doing right now. Um, so Monday through Thursday, we will be adding in that lightning literature component. And on Fridays, this is when I'm thinking we will do exploring the world through story. I expect us to do history and geography twice a week, so going for that Monday and Thursday. Our science also twice a week for our Tuesday and Friday, and then spelling Wednesday and Friday. So I want I think when um, doing two days a week with spelling might be attainable. Now on Mondays, we typically meet up with some friends, so I actually still blocked off that time. Piano, we do typically on Tuesdays nowadays, and then martial arts, we do on Wednesdays, and Thursdays, we try to do swimming. We're not always very good about that. Now, the only other thing that I foresee as changing our schedule is we might be doing a homeschool group in the upcoming year, but that plan, that um, group schedule is not released until during the summer, so we will have to wait and see. All right, you guys, and that is it. Comment down below, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye, everyone. Oh, hit that subscribe button, please. All right, bye.